be able to keep working with them. It was a major success and accomplishment to bring in so many large corporations committed to help solve the military spouse crisis. We filled the room and had a limited attendance because it was so popular. It wasn't open to everyone. You had to be able to commit to helping spouses. And you know, let me tell you how it works in the White House. There are a lot of people stuffed into tiny offices and long hours, low pay. Uh, there's also mice, uh, which is a problem. And, um, <laughs> but it's an honor to, to be there. And the goal is to make good policy and have it, have it implemented and then outlast you. And also to bring awareness through press coverage. But the only way to secure that press coverage is to leave DC for a surrogate to take the issue on the road. And that's exactly what Mrs. Pence did in Excel then. I brought along some photos of my years in the White House, which I have um, at the table up front that I'm happy to um, share with you when I'm done speaking. But um, I was, when I was going through them, I realized I pulled out a lot of pictures of the Pences when they were together, traveling together, um, which wasn't actually, it's only a fair representation of the years of Mrs. Pence because majority of the time she did travel solo so we could cover more, uh, more ground. But when we did travel together, it was something um, very memorable because number one, you could travel on Air Force Two. And number two, we were able to kind of use the Vice President's um, staff infrastructure. And my team was a team of nine versus his team of about 75. So wow. anytime I could use his team to help uh, with the workload, it was definitely um, appreciated. So. Uh, a major, another major drive inside the Trump White House was to reduce, reduce veteran suicide. And Mrs. Pence also took on a role as a lead ambassador for that effort. It was called the President's Roadmap to Empower Veterans and End a natural, National Tragedy of Suicide. It's a mouthful. We also call it PREVENT, an acronym. So. Around this time, now we're up to a 2020 COVID struck. And you have to understand that the way we scheduled things in Mrs. Pence's office was we would schedule, you know, up probably three months in advance. So at this point, we were scheduled through the summer and then had a skeleton idea of what the rest of the year would look like. So we knew what was going to happen in 2020. But then COVID struck. We had events up until the day that the country shut down. And how do you leave during a pandemic? You can't just stop and stay home. The American people needed us to so it took a few weeks to kind of regroup and get uh, briefings from the task force to kind of see what the trajectory of COVID would be. Um, meanwhile, at home, keep in mind, I have three children who were home trying to do online learning. So it was an incredibly stressful time um, in, in our house. But um, after a few weeks after Easter, Easter holiday, we started adding events back to the calendar and doing what we could and where we could to be helpful. So we had to start all over again, think about what's important to the country. What do we need to emphasize? And how are we going to deliver that message? Also, while not getting Ms. Daft sick and not getting Mrs. Pence sick, and, and how do we keep everybody during the pandemic, keep everyone safe? So, um, so Mrs. Pence decided to add on mental health um, to, because really it was during a time some people were struggling with their mental health. And you know, the president was focused on fighting COVID and keeping the economy going, but the American people were really suffering. So she encouraged people to go outside. We traveled to national parks talking about the benefits of being in the outdoors on our mental health. And she also encouraged national park employees who I may not know, but also face mental health struggles as many people use national parks to end their own life. So we continued her work on prevents, on military spouse issues, on veteran suicide prevention and art therapy. But we also continued her campaign work. So she raised money and stuff for candidates to use Zoom or any other methods that could reach a crowd and to help out. Um, one of my favorite stories, though, from this time during COVID, an event we put together with uh, someone called the Walking Rowing. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but his name is Terry Sharp, and he every summer walks 300 miles from North Carolina to Washington, D.C. to bring awareness to veteran hunger, homelessness, and the 26 veterans commit suicide each day. So we arranged for Terry to finish his walk with Mrs. Pence the last mile and to finish that walk at the White House. But as a surprise to him, we had a, crowd, a cheering crowd and President Trump waiting for him at the finish line yeah. on the South Lawn. Yeah. So, um, and he was so surprised that, keep in mind, he's walking with Mrs. Pence, 
that he like lets out and um, a, a profanity. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we, that was the same reaction that we had. <laughs> um, but you know, it's really rarely talked about at the national level, level, but Hiram Pence was also an active political campaigner. And not just for Mike Pence's con congressional and governor's races, but also in the 2016 campaign, 2016 campaign, and all four years in the White House. And she's a master of it. There was more than one occasion the VP not jokingly commented that she outdelivered him at a speech. And um, as her team, you know, we loved every minute of it because he was usually right. You know? <laughs> um, you know, like her policy work, I took a similar approach to her political work. It would be impossible to say yes to everyone and everything. So we had to pick where she could do the most good and was needed. So we had the chance to travel the country supporting candidates, local parties, and Trump, President Trump himself. So I love policy work, but I also really love the political work. So in one handwritten note she gave me after a particularly long week, she called me her happy warrior, and I was. So, um, and you have to be, because you can't keep up the pace unless it's something that you really love and you really believe in.